Well hello and welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got part one of uh, my look at the Costa 524 Melody Maker it's a radio I obtained off eBay for £21 um, it's not working but the case seemed to be in nice condition and uh, the insides look like they're um, not been tampered with looks like it's got original components as you're going to see um, in this video and hopefully it's going to make a, a good project now when I was a lad 50 odd years ago the, the name Cossa was actually quite quite commonplace on the front of radios and televisions it was also on the front of, of test equipment too um, Cossa as a company got going in the 1800s the eight, in the 1850s actually and by the 1890s they were producing scientific glassware and that ironically stood them in very good stead when they got involved in producing um, their glass envelopes for some of the early x-ray tubes and some of the early cathode ray tubes um, by 1904 they were helping Ambrose Fleming produce some experimental valves they were doubtless providing the, the, the glassware expertise World War One, they ended up producing the R-type valve along with several other manufacturers and in 1927 a genuine first in that they managed to produce the first British RF pentode that was two or three years before anybody else had done it so uh, they were ahead of the game there 1935 saw them involved in producing some of the equipment for Robert Watson Watt when he did his experiments with radar and was able to detect an aircraft um, using radio um, and what we now would now call radar. Um, in the Second World War they were heavily involved in producing equipment for the chain home radar system which was located all around the UK coast and formed a very a very potent um, set of uh, source of information for, for our air defence system in, in World War II. After the war lots of production of radios and this particular model the 534 was actually produced in 1955 and in 1955 was also the year that the BBC started broadcasting in FM and this particular model is an AM receiver, it has short wave, medium wave and long wave but it also has FM and um, if you look at the circuit diagram uh, the FM bit just appears to be just, uh, just a part of the circuit really um, but actually that FM front end and FM oscillator is actually an entirely separate bolt on piece just here that's that vertical bit fully enclosed with one valve that's a double triode acting as the oscillator and also as the, as the RF front end and the rest of the radio is a conventional three band uh, AM superhead except for the fact that these IF transformers are actually dual transformers uh, one, one pair for the four uh, 60 kilohertz IF for the AM and another pair for the 10.7 megahertz IF they share the same valves um, but they have a slightly different uh, signal path depending on the IF frequency and when it comes to detection obviously detecting AF is uh, sorry detecting AM is relatively straightforward just requires rectification detecting FM is a little bit more difficult and so there's a little bit of extra circuitry uh, around the detector valve which is a double diode triode here um, but then we're back into a fairly straightforward um, uh, pentode um, AF output stage so um, interesting radio and uh, in 1955 the a sorry the FM VHF broadcast band ran from 87 to 100 megahertz these days it runs from 87 to 108 megahertz so this radio just does that 13 megahertz portion from 87 up to 100 fortunately in the UK that means there's lots of stations in that area so hopefully it's going to um, produce a, a good sound on FM assuming of course I can get it working so let's take a look at the radio itself and see what um, what it is that awaits us OK, well here we are with the first look at the Cossa 564 Melody Maker which has arrived today and as expected really the uh, case looks to be in reasonable condition the uh, dial glass is uh, readable I can... Uh, tuning seems to move re fairly, fairly smoothly yeah. we've got a four position switch here for uh, FM, short wave, medium wave and long wave a little stiff but 
particularly when getting into the FM section, but I'm sure that's sortable. And this end we've got a on off. Um, cloth doesn't look too bad. Uh, case is good. So next thing to do is um, have a look what it's like inside. Okay, well here's the back of the radio and uh, we've got a FM dipole there which uh, unplugs. A um, little bit tarnished but it's okay. And uh, first thing to note is that's not obviously not the original mains lead. That's quite a, a modern piece of cable as is the, the plug. Fuse 13 amps. I think we'll have to put a slightly smaller fuse in than that. Um, if 13 amps is indeed what's in it. So there's a couple of screws here to remove um, and then we can uh, we can take a look inside. They're fairly rusty um, and crossheads so be surprised if the originals were crossheads but you never know. Okay uh, let's see what we've got. Okay there we go. Just put that safely to one side and we've got five valves with getter that looks reasonable on most of them and interesting uh, interesting power supply amendment here all that's been done here is uh, some uh, what look like snap connectors have been used to attach the um, original mains lead to the new one uh, and there's an earth connection been made so let's hope the chassis um, is indeed earth. There's a wire hanging here, that's the external uh, loudspeaker socket. Um, looking at the, the speaker, um, actually looks to be in reasonably good condition from, from this angle, a little bit rusty on the on the body but um, looks okay apart from that. Substantial main transformer, output transformer and if I move the tuning yeah I can see the veins of the tuning capacitor moving there. So what we've got here is um, AM power supply and the audio sections are all on this chassis and this um, box here is the FM so there is a sixth valve in there um, and there's a, a connection the FM tuning is done by moving coil rather than capacitor so there is apparently a, a connection according to what I've read so far so that looks um, pretty reasonable Looking at the date on that electrolytic capacitor there, it's saying 1955. So 1955 is about the right year, so hopefully that's um, that's original. I'm sort of hoping for an original radio after the last one, which was very modified. Um, and looking underneath, um, probably can't see terribly well on the camera, but um, yeah, that looks, certainly the resistors are original, not sure about that. That electrolytic there, that might be modern. Well, I say modern, it might be newer than the radio, um, but it doesn't look like a great deal has been done to it, and certainly doesn't look like it's been heavily modified. Yeah, there's certainly some original uh, capacitors there. So, uh, good, this might be um, an interesting project then. So, I think first thing I'm going to try is uh, attach it to my uh, Current limited supply, and just uh, bring it up on the variac and see if um, if anything at all happens. And um, obviously, if there's any smoke, we'll turn it off quickly. But just uh, before we uh, start taking it apart, we'll we'll maybe do that. So there we go, Cosa five two four melody maker. Okay, well here we are with the chassis uh, out of the case and. Uh, Obviously very grubby, um, but apart from that, doesn't look um, doesn't look too bad. Um, and I've just removed a little, little uh, actually a crosshead self-tapping screw from the FM board. Um, so they clearly did use crosshead screws back then. So that's the the FM board. Again, it's very grubby, but uh, you can see the various components there. And I've done this because I just wanted to show you the. Uh, Obviously you've got the tuning coil here which tunes the variable capacitor which is behind the FM board, you can't see it from this camera angle. Um, and as you tune the AM part of the radio, the big variable capacitor, these two uh, 
lines here uh, move in and out um, and they're spring loaded there and there um, be quite hard to see on camera I'll just see if I can move in a little bit for you that's about the best I can do um, but that is the the FM tuning so as one pulls in the other pull, pulls out and um, so that springs extended and that one's now uh, beginning to extend and this one's uh, getting shorter again so there's a couple of extension springs there um, so certainly a interesting uh, interesting way of doing things and um, yeah still seems to be remarkably still seems to be working okay so um, plenty of um, uh, dust and spiders webs and the remains of a few of the spiders who probably built the webs too there's one there just to to remove um, and just can see here now that uh, at least can't quite see the name on the PA valve but certainly the three what will be the RF the two IF valves and the rectifier are all COSA valves so um, I suspect they'll be they'll be original I don't know if I can get the cover off the FM1 very easily and see uh, that isn't a COSA valve what's that one uh, let's just see if we can have a look that is a 6A 06 um, tu Tungs Gram uh, radio tube it says uh, foreign made um, get a looks okay so that's the first that's the first uh, view I've had of that um, so there we go that's the sort of the end view of the um, FM board so uh, let's just Swing it round a bit, and um, you can hopefully see the rest. Uh, the dial glass, actually, I think, really is a piece of glass. <laughs> so I have to be very careful with that. But it, but it is in um, in nice condition. So uh, so that's good. Um, and this is a connection to a little ferrite rod aerial that's actually uh, inside the case. So I've obviously uh, left that inside the case. Um, and let's just now have a look on the bottom, being very careful with that with that dial light. Um, as you get very grubby, so I've got some waxes here. They're definitely going to have to go a few down there as well. Um, not sure about that one. I don't know, that, I don't know what year that is. Um, that that looks like it's original. Um, that might be original, just not not quite sure. Um, but the rest of it uh, looks original and some pretty uh, big wattage resistors there as well so uh, that's going to tax my component sourcing skills I guess. Mind you they may be okay but it um, just depends um, what they've been doing. They usually seem to go quite high in my experience uh, when they start to fail. So, um, good. Pleased with my purchase and uh, another project to get going with. Um, might try and get the uh, Echo uh, 134 finished before I uh, make a start on this because I've been making quite good progress with that so uh, we'll just have to see but at least this one's um, an AC version with a with a transformer unlike uh, the other one which is a AC or DC and it's a few years older so there we go that's the first look OK, well that's it for part one of the COSA 524 Melody Maker. hope uh, you've enjoyed what you've seen. Um, I've got a bit of a challenge ahead, but hopefully not too much of a challenge. So next job is to get components ordered and uh, make a start on, uh, on replacing some of the, the things that are clearly life expired. So thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please click the thumbs up. If not, you can give us a thumbs down. Look out below for links um, to one or two websites that can tell you a little bit more about the history of the of the Cossa Company, a fascinating part of, uh, of the British uh, electronic scene in the in the last century. And um, it'd be great if you could subscribe. And hopefully, yeah, uh, see you on the next one.